Wasn't he great? <laughs> Mr. President, we want to um, welcome you to Cleveland. Uh, we think it's outstanding that it was a conservative Republican president that's the first sitting president to address the uh, city club of the city of Cleveland. And I think that's really great because most of us know here that that city club is kind of a liberal organization. <laughs> and over 75 years, they weren't able to get anybody else to come in here, but it was Ronald Reagan that uh, did it. And Mr. President, we really appreciate the fact that um, you think enough of our candidacy for the United States Senate to come to Cleveland, Ohio for your first political visit of 1988. We really appreciate that, and I can tell you, you really have started the momentum for our candidacy in the state. And we are going to have a Republican senator from Ohio with your help. And you know, Mr. President, we think that it's really appropriate that as your first public visit and political visit that you've come to Cleveland, Ohio, because it all started right here in Cleveland, Ohio on October 28th at the great debate at the Music Hall where you convinced the American people that you had the understanding, the leadership, and the vision to lead us out of the dark days of the 70s into the new era, the Reagan era of the 80s. <laughs> And I think you reminded us in your speech, remember you asked that question, are you any better off than you were four years ago? And the answer came back, no. Well, I gotta tell you, Mr. President, after you almost being there eight years, if you asked the same question, the answer would be resounding, yes, we're better off than we were eight years ago. And you ticked off in your speech all of the good things that happened. We also want you to know, Mr. President, that we really applaud your signing the INF agreement. Uh, it's the first step, we think, in having a world that will be safe from nuclear war. And we pray that it is the first step in that effort. And we also know, and I'm glad you pointed it out today, that we wouldn't have been there without a strong defense and your insistence that the Soviets get out of Afghanistan and the third world nations and that they abide by the human rights provisions of the Helsinki Final Act. And we know, Mr. President, that the best way that we can thank you for the wonderful job that you've done for our country and for this world is to elect a Republican president and a United States Senate in 1988 so we can continue the great leadership that we've had under you during the last eight years. And um, I can assure you that Janet and I and each and every person in this room is going to work so that that takes place. And we're also going to do one other thing. We're going to continue to ask Almighty God to bless you and Nancy and our country. Because during your presidency, Mr. President, God has blessed America. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't get a chance to do this in 1984 when the president was here because they said I might talk too long. Mr. <laughs> it's my honor and privilege to introduce the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, George, and thank you. Thank all of you. It's great to be back in Ohio with so many friends and supporters. And I've seen so many people here, Congressman Bob McEwen, Congressman Ralph Regula, Governor Jim Rhodes, Dave Johnson, Fred Lennon, Mike Colley, Ed Lozick, and so many others who've worked so hard and will continue to work for the causes that we all share. I'd like to give a special hello to the present mayor of Cleveland and the next senator from the great state of Ohio, George Voinovich.
And also, warm greetings to his lovely wife, Janet, whom I understand has been hard at work on the campaign trail. Now, I know you've just finished listening to me give one speech, so you probably had a cold chill when you saw me take some notes out of my pocket. <laughs> You'll probably be relieved to hear that I intend to keep these remarks brief. I often recall that when that distinguished son of Ohio, Ulysses S. Grant, was called back to Washington to receive command of the Union forces, the longest speech that he managed to make was this. Gentlemen, in response, it will be impossible to do more than thank you. <laughs> and then there's the comparison between George Washington and William Henry Harrison. Washington gave an inaugural address of fewer than 200 words and became a great president. Harrison spoke for nearly two hours, caught pneumonia, and was dead within a month. <laughs> and I told him at the time to keep it short. But while I intend to keep my message to you brief, I don't want there to be any misunderstanding about its importance. While I intend to keep pushing ahead during these next few months on issues critical to the future of our country, such as continued funding for the Contras and ratification of the INF Treaty and the appointment of Judge Kennedy to the Supreme Court, I can only do so with your help. I've come to urge you to keep our economy growing, our defenses strong, and our spirit proud. I have come to ask you to elect Cleveland Mayor George Voinovich to the Senate of the United States. And may I just point out here that for six of the seven years that have gone by, we had a Republican Senate and a Democratic House. But we got all those things that I cited that have brought our economy back really because of that one House that we had, the Senate. And now, for several months, and or a, going on a year and another year to go, we're back to both houses being of the other party. And already it is apparent that harassment is going on even in the appointment of judges, not just to the Supreme Court, but a backlog of judges that they're just gonna let them sit without ratifying them in the hope that then they'll be able to appoint the ones they want when they get in. So uh, what he said about what we can do if you really want to win one for the Gipper, you send him there and uh, let us have a Senate, at least to finish this term out, where we can do battle on somewhat even terms with the other side. I uh, don't suppose that in all our nation there are very many public servants with records as impressive as that of George, Assistant Attorney General for the State of Ohio, elected three times to the Ohio House of Representatives, Cuyahoga County Auditor for five years, then two years as Cuyahoga County Commissioner. In 1978, elected Lieutenant Governor, and then in 1979, recruited by community leaders, some here in this room, to run for mayor of this city. And as mayor, George inherited the leadership of a city that was in default and a debt of $110 million. And this past June, the city of Cleveland paid off the last million. Now I ask you, since George seems to have developed a habit of getting governments out of debt, isn't he just the man to send to Washington? <laughs> Goodness knows we could use his expertise in that Senate chamber up on Capitol Hill. But that's only the beginning of what George has accomplished for this good city. He's fostered public-private partnerships, Lexington Village, for example, when phase two of this project is completed, Lexington Village will include some 300 affordable rental units, family dwellings where once there was only rubble. George has overseen financial reforms and the institutions of six enterprise zones here in Cleveland. And George has fostered a $1 billion building boom, the biggest building boom in Cleveland history, evidence of which can be seen from the riverfront to public square. As a prominent national magazine reported, Quote, ambitious development is sprouting in soil long unused to ground baking, unquote. 
Now, it's true that George and I haven't agreed on absolutely every issue, but I want you to know that I respect his independence of mind and that on fundamentals like a strong national defense and for the freedom fighters of Nicaragua and especially the need for economic growth, George and I are joined at the hip. <laughs> and I can promise you, George and I agree with each other a whole lot more than either of us agrees with that fellow George is running against. <laughs> I could go on and on, but I think you get the idea. George Voinovich is one outstanding public servant. Well, let, let me just ask you, don't you think it's about time George got a little promotion? <laughs> uh, this, uh, uh, and this Senate race in Ohio is an important one to the Republican Party. There are three factors it'll take to win. One, an excellent candidate. We've already got that with George. Two, a united party with all the Republicans working together. And three, resources. Elections are costly to run these days, and it's only with the help of loyal supporters such as yourselves that George can get elected. In the next 10 months, your efforts will be critical. So thank you for all the help that you're giving George in this vital campaign. And while I'm at it, thanks for all the help you've given to me in campaigns past. We've turned America around during these seven years. Now it's up to men and women like George Voinovich to keep her strong and growing. And I just have to believe that that's what is going to take place. I think those dreamers on the other side of the aisle up there who think that maybe they're going to be back to their 50 years of national destruction, let's send them home crying in their beer. <laughs> Thank you, and God bless all of you. Mr. President, Mr. President I, uh, I want to present this key to the city of Cleveland as a reminder of your visit here but most of all, to remind you that this city wouldn't be the city it is today, the Renaissance city, the comeback city, without your leadership in Washington, D.C. This city, I think, has made the Reagan dream come true because we've done more for ourselves than any other city in the United States of America, a three-time All-America city in a five-year period. No other city in the United States has accomplished that, and if this president had not asked us to do more for ourselves, we wouldn't be where we are today. And Mr. President, for that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. 